In this video, I want to pose you this uh, question and this question has, uh, you know, uh, caused many sleepless nights uh, across uh, many generations of uh, inquisitive uh, students learning about uh, semiconductor physics uh, for the first time. And the question is, you know, can the dopants, can donors and acceptor act as uh, trap centers for uh, generation and uh, recombination? So what I'm saying is, you know, if, if I have uh, these uh, dopants over here and these are creating, uh, in this case, these donors, they are creating these uh, states very close uh, to the conduction band. So, you know, can these states created uh, by the dopant, can it act as a, as a source for uh, my recombination or generation process? So, you know, can this, can this position of uh, energy levels created by the dopant, can it, you know, help in my recombination process as shown over here? Or, you know, in the case of acceptor, if I have these uh, energy, uh, you know, if I have these states created near my valence band, again, you know, can they help in a process of generation or recombination of uh, careers? And uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll go by the idea that, you know, I'll have a positive attitude about uh, this, uh, this topic and I'll say, you know, why not, you know, so why not? Why, I'll assume that, you know, yes, these, uh, these uh, dopants, uh, these uh, donors and acceptor can, in fact, you know, these states uh, created by these uh, donors and acceptor are good trap center. So what I need to do is, you know, then I'll call the, instead of calling them the position of uh, the energy step due to donors, I'll call them as, you know, as my trap energy level. And similarly over here, I'll call this as my trap energy level. And so now I need to, you know, and I need to, you know, calculate what is, what is the rate of generation and recombination due to these uh, trap levels. So again, you know, I look back to these ugly, look back to this ugly looking formula that was derived by Shockley, Reed and Hall. And what it says is, you know, for energy, any of these uh, traps, this recombination uh, generation rate is given by this formula and it's related uh, to the energy position of this trap by this uh, by this hyperbolic uh, cosine function so and you know this hyperbolic cosine function depends upon how far is my trap a level from my energy from my intrinsic energy level so yes you know let's let's find that out so you know let's draw my intrinsic energy level which is close to my mid band gap and you know over here as well so what i see is that uh, this if if you know if the trap state is given by the energy level of my donor then what i get is this uh, et minus ei and you know so this would be you know far away from my intrinsic energy level if it's a good uh, donor atom so this must be much uh, larger than uh, kt or this divided by kt should be much larger than 1 on the other case, you know, if, if I have if I have a, a, a trap level which is very close to my conduction band, then again, you know, what I, I'll have in this case is my EI minus ET should be much larger than KT or, you know, this term divided by KT should be again much larger than 1. So what I see is, you know, the 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 energy dependence which determines my uh, determines my uh, hyper hyperbolic cosine function is you know so this 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 is the number which i can call at uh, call as let's say x so you know my x when in my hyperbolic cosine function is is you know much larger than one and i i talked about hyperbolic cosine function but you know just to remind you again it has this functional dependence where it's uh, it it rises up or you know it blows up exponentially if you move away from the origin so if it's you know x is is you know it's it's one or two or it's minus one or minus two or you know it's much higher it blows up it it increases exponentially so what i'll have is you know in in i'm getting from this equation is this my uh, hyperbolic cosine uh, term is uh, is going to blow up for uh, for uh, for these uh, trap states which are at uh, the energy level of my donor or acceptor and you know since this term blows up this overall this overall overall denominator will also you know blow up so what will this will result in my net uh, my net uh, generation or recombination rate this is going to be very small you know so this number is going to be very small 
mal. So these are these are I mean I, I assume that these are you know these are these are trap levels, but they are you know very ineffective uh, traps. So these are not going to you know assist much in my recombination and generation process. So then that brings me to question you know what are good traps? So you know what I've said is uh, that if my energy level is uh, close to my valence band which is or uh, close to my uh, conduction band so in the case if it's close to the conduction band if it's elements like you know phosphorus arsenic antimony which are good donors then energy level is very close to the conduction band similarly elements like boron which are good uh, acceptors these are energy level is close to the valence band so these are not uh, very effective traps so the elements which are effective traps are the ones whose energy level is very close to the middle of the band gap. So elements like copper, elements like gold. So, you know, these these produces trap states which are close to the intrinsic uh, energy level, which is, you know, close to the mid band gap. Uh, uh, for semiconductors like uh, silicon and uh, what I see is that you know if I add a little bit of gold or if I add a little bit of uh, copper I see that this will produce a large number of uh, trap states close to the middle band and you know my recombination generation rate will uh, will just increase so that's why you know a way uh, a good amount of effort in semiconductor processing is spent on avoiding elements like copper and gold from diffusing into silicon. So because if it go even a sliver or a small concentration of these elements goes into silicon, it will essentially kill your device. So even though copper is, is, is you know, very widely used uh, in semiconductor uh, chips for making interconnects, this is, you know, always surrounded by a barrier of uh, tie nitride or, you know, tantalum nitride, which prevents this copper from reaching into the silicon.